Good morning, class. Today I'm going to talk about the passage on errors that we had to read for our math 43:12. Before reading this passage, I always believed in Albert Einstein's quote about a person who has never made a mistake never tried anything before. So I think that is totally true, especially when it comes to students. Um, students don't see all um, mistakes as a good thing. And I think that that's where they misinterpret learning and understanding. Because I think that with mistakes comes understanding and um, clarity. <clears throat> After reading this um, passage... I realize that my changing about my thinking about errors changed in the way of planning. I never thought about planning a whole lesson about errors. I always thought about pinpointing it out, talking to the student, because these are things that I saw on a daily basis in field experience hours. Um, so now the fact that I see that errors could be involved in our lesson planning it brings out a broader view about what students will think about errors the reason being is students think about errors as a failure but I think about errors as a positive thing because they could learn as to where they're going wrong and maybe help each other along the way this errors passage talked about not only selecting mathematical tasks um, in order to plan for instruction, but it also talked about students working with each other on this task. So even asking the student if they um, want to share their error is a great thing. I like to be involved in my classroom, like more of a home-based classroom. So this is a perfect way to bring students together and make them feel more comfortable with each other by having them share their mistakes and errors along the way. Um, and having them do a public discussion as to how they came about this answer. And I think it's a positive reinforcement when it comes to students in a classroom and making errors. Um, I'm going to move on to the, the passage about operating with fractions called linking concepts and procedures. Before reading this, um, I thought this passage would be about connecting with prior knowledge as to what the students already know about fractions or about breaking things into portions so that they understand <clears throat> when sharing something, people need to have the same amount. So if you want a piece of cookie, you break it in half. And normally students would see, oh, you have a bigger piece, I have a smaller piece. But they still think it's half of the cookie. Whereas now, after reading this passage, I saw that students understanding the concept of splitting things equally, partitioning them, is more difficult for them to understand. So, because it mentioned in the passage that fractions are the most difficult um, topic in elementary school and math, I see the reason why. Because seeing all the trial and error that they created as an understanding to solving their math problems <clears throat> that the teacher gave them, I saw the errors that students could make in splitting everything in half and then having left over and then not knowing what to do with that. It made perfect sense because they just don't understand how to split something so that it could be the exact size that they want. Like I really like the um, candy bars that were being split into 15p 
people, but it was only 10 candy bars. I like and see a new image of fractioning things or partitioning things by one item at a time. So one candy bar will be split into 15 exact pieces. That way, every candy bar, at least one of the friends, will be able to get one little piece from it. And I never saw it in that way. I always saw it as breaking it into halves or fourths. So it brought to my attention a more clear way of thinking as fractions wise. So this passage really talked about um, three different sites, meaning ways of seeing things. The first way a teacher would show it would be, this is 